This is the plaintiff, Doria Berman. She says the defendant is her neighbor and they used to be pretty friendly. But then his unleashed dog attacked her dog Watson, injuring him something awful. Watson's tooth was fractured. She's out $1,037.43 in vet bills. And since the defendant refuses to pay in full, she's suing. This is the defendant, Michael. He says the plaintiff's dog, Watson, bit his dog on the nose. Now she's suing for a broken tooth? That's like if the plaintiff punched him in the face and broke her hand, would he be responsible for her injuries? He thinks not. He's accused of failing to control his dog. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says her dog was nearly killed by the defendant's vicious dog, and now the guy won't pay her vet bills. But the defendant says the plaintiff is trying to tack on extra charges he's not responsible for, and that just ain't right. It's the case of my dog is extra. Okay, Ms. Berman, what happened? Hi, I was um, walking my dog. Um, I was actually with my two dogs, and my um, adult child was walking with me. Um, the defendant drove by me um, in his car and parked in his driveway. And were you two neighbors? We are neighbors, yes. And you've known each other for how long? Um, seven or eight years. Okay, go on. Um, then his dog came running down the street towards me and my dogs. Um, my dogs were unleashed. His dog was not unleashed. Your do um, oh, st stop, 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 and say that more slowly. Sure. Were your dogs sure. on a leash? Yes. Was his dog on a leash? No. He was unleashed? Yes. Okay, so he jumps out of the car and what happens? Um, runs down the street. Okay, but how did the dog get out of the car? He must have opened the door for the car for the dog. Yeah, yeah, they, they had pulled into the driveway and were going into their own home. All right, and so go on. The dog runs down the street. Yes, our dogs have an altercation. Um, it lasted less than 30 seconds. Had the, had the dogs known each other before now? Yes. Have they ever had an altercation before? They have, actually. Okay, so these two dogs don't particularly like each other? Correct. Okay, so go on. Um, so I finished my walk, um, because it was a 30-second altercation, and I didn't see any injury at the time. Um, when I got home, I noticed that my dog's tooth was, you know, leaning out of his mouth. So, you know, I, I um, called my vet. My vet, it was a Sunday afternoon, so my vet told me to go to the ER. The ER did a, a procedure there, but then told me I had to go to my regular vet um, to have the rest of the procedure done, and I did that. Um, so meanwhile, while the defendant and I are talking, um, they said that they felt bad and um, gave me a, a check for the first ER bill. Okay. Um, I did not cash it, because on the check, they wrote final payment. Big, okay, because by the time they wrote that check, you had already told them that there was going to be additional work? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So how much in total were you out, the 1037.43? Yes, and there was um, actually a little error. The receipt for the second bill was actually 589. I forgot a second page that had a dollar and change in tax. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me hear from you, Mr. Uh, Michael. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, just to clarify, we're not direct neighbors. We, we're probably five or six houses away. Um, and it's more of a, you know, neighborly wave kind of thing, chit chat. Um, we have had altercations in the past, but I'll tell you about With the, the story dogs. first. The dogs? Yeah. So right. we have, uh, currently we have two dogs. Um, one passed away in December. Uh, there was a fight between him and her dog uh, last year this time, actually. Um, but Daisy had gotten out before and approached, but sh again, she just approached and barked and we were able to pull her back without any, uh, physical altercation between Daisy and Watson. Um, right. did so you on, the see, did the, you, on the day of the incident, did you see that Watson was over there? We, when we pulled in the driveway, they were probably a hundred yards down the road. Um, we pulled out of the driveway and I have a minivan. So I opened the slide and back door. We have a new puppy as well. He's seven months old. So I went to grab him first. Daisy typically does listen. Uh, she did see a squirrel, jumped out of the car and was starting to chase it, looked up and saw Watson um, and then ran, hightailed it down the street. She did come up and confront Watson. Um, he was, she was barking a lot. Watson was barking a lot. Uh, the, the plaintiff was trying to hold Watson back. Watson bit Daisy on the nose and she hightailed it right back to us. 
Uh, I checked on Daisy's nose. She had a puncture on her snout. Uh, as the you know, as the plaintiff walked by, I asked if he was okay. She said, "Yes, he's fine." I apologized for Daisy, and we went and treated her wounds. Later that night, she did contact my wife via Facebook. Um, you know, and we had a conversation. I believe the next day, on the phone, and we told her that you know, I used that analogy that actually a friend of mine at work gave me. Um, you know, that if you know her and I were in an argument and she punches me in the face, then she's going to sue me for her broken hand. Like, uh, right. he, he Here's the her. thing about that analogy. If you and the plaintiff are in an argument and she punches you, her act of punching you is the bad act that gets punished, right? Because right. she doesn't get to be violent and punch you. So that is very different from, yes, I know, her dog bit your dog. I get it. But if your dog had not been running loose, her dog's tooth wouldn't yep. be loose. You see what I'm saying? So yes. why is she so far off? You guys um, were, in fact, you wrote up a check and said, here's a check for this, but this is full and final payment because you didn't want to get into some, you know, who knows how, how far this will go. But yeah. uh, at the end of the day, though, the tooth is loose and, and a problem because your dog, because you didn't have your dog on a leash. She, uh, don't she open the leash. sliding door. Uh, well, she was on a leash, but you, she wasn't in your control. Squirt. Correct. Like, you know, she yep. just darted and she's out of your control. And then this problem happens. And in particular with, you know, because you've said hello, you know that she's 100 yards away. And, and what? And you don't know that your dog can run 100 yards? Your dog can run 100 yards. So, yep. you, so it, you don't open the sliding door of the van until you are there to take control. And, um, and, and you must take control. But you, you can't uh, do what you did and I realized in your mind, well, how is this my fault? Her dog bit. But remember, we never punish the dogs for being animals, right? We punish the Absolutely. human behavior. Uh, is yeah. your dog and off leash? Did your dog get out of the yard? Did your dog? That's what we punish. The dogs are going to be animals. If a dog is coming at a hundred mile, hundred yard sprint at her dog, her dog is going to bite it. You know, that's a normal reaction for the dog. So the question is, did your, her dog having to bite your dog because your dog got loose, did that make the tooth a problem? So let me hear from right. you on that. <clears throat> yep. So when we received the uh, bill from the VCA, there was a note in there about existing gingivitis and existing uh, moderate tartar. So on a seven-year-old dog, um, you know, it doesn't make sense that his bottom tooth would bite on a... Um, uh, an 80 pounds, uh, seven year old healthy teeth of a dog shouldn't result in a loose tooth from a, a quick bite to my dog's nose. And if it was, our dog's nose should have been mush. Um, so, so, a... so what you're saying is the dog must have had tooth problems before your dog got loose. There's a concept in the law, and, and it applies in this case as well, where, that you, you take your plaintiff as you find him. So if, if in fact you end up crashing your car against me and I have pre-existing back pain and you have now made my back pain unbearable and now I need surgery. You can't say, hey, you might have, she might have needed the surgery at some point. So uh, part of that shouldn't be my fault. No, the concept in the law is we can't possibly slice and dice like that. So if you mm -hmm. have the misfortune of, of crashing into me and I already, I am an eggshell plaintiff. Uh, this, this has been litigated for 100 years. You know, I am an eggshell plaintiff, meaning I crack easily, right? Um, that's too bad, so sad for you. It's still caused by what you did. So, no, it's the same thing with yeah. the dog. And, and, again, tell your friend who gave you the analogy with the punch that that would be great if her dog was doing... I'm sorry, if she was doing something wrong. And she is not doing anything wrong, failing to maintain control over her dog because she's holding on to the dog and she doesn't, it's your dog that goes into her space. And even if your dog stops a foot away, it doesn't matter. You've, the, the looseness of your dog is what causes everything to go into play. So I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in this case in the full amount, $1,037.43. So this is a pretty simple decision for the judge. The plaintiff prevails. She gets everything she was seeking, the $1,037. Michael, you're the defendant. It was your dog that was off the leash. You understand the judge's verdict? What are you thinking? I, I understand her verdict. I was hoping that she would see that um, 
It might have been some pre-existing conditions. I understand that she's saying it's 100% our fault because the dog was off the leash, and we, we took that responsibility when we paid her for the initial ER visit. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that, you know, his teeth, bottom tooth cracked on my dog's nose, and there was just a little bite mark on her. But, uh, you know, we'll follow her ruling and, and um, abide by it. Yeah, well, the judge said your your analogy just didn't work. Uh, pre-existing conditions yeah. didn't matter in this case. You owe her the thousand thirty-seven bucks. Okay, you're welcome, uh, Ms. Berman. You're going to get the money. Um, how you feel? Um, I'm happy with the verdict. Um, I do do want, want to add that I did submit um, the dog's medical records from his physical in November, and there was a comment that said good teeth right in those records too. So he didn't have a pre-existing condition anyway. Well, he had something I because do. the vet did put that uh, in the report, something about oh, uh, some kind of problem he with his mouth. Right? All right. By the way, um, how is your dog now? He's good. He's he's now missing three teeth, actually, but he's he's recovered. Missing three teeth. Well, take him to the dentist. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You have prevailed. Okay. Harvey? Doug, in most states, dog owners cannot get pain and suffering uh, for their animals when they're injured like this. I will say the law is changing. It used to be the dogs were just treated as property. More and more states are not treating them as such, although pain and suffering is really an exception rather than the rule when it comes to animal injuries. Who buys the groceries and what's something that you get every single time you go to the grocery store? I think we both do. We kind of share that. I agree. Um, it was different when you were working in the courthouse and you never had free time, right. but now... Right. Um, we we have no excuses kind of, anymore. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're run out of excuses, pal. Your honey do list is right, right in your face. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, I think we kind of share that. And the thing we, what do we always get? Eggs, yeah. half and half. Yeah, because uh, I drink stuff that a lot of coffee. Else gets. Although the one thing I always want to get, but it's kind of blueberries. You yes. have this obsession yeah. now with the blueberries. blueberries, right? But it's like I can't delegate that to other people because. Because um, we're all idiots and we well, don't know how to Well, only I your... can identify the best I, You have been known to go twice in one day to the grocery store yeah. if the blueberries were particularly good. You go right. back and you buy two more cartons and right. woof them down like they're candy. I know, but you know what's really bad about the berries? Back in the old days, they'd have these little pints or half pints and stuff, and you could maybe try one. Those days are gone. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, if you're going to try one, you'd have to snap the thing open and hope nobody's well, looking. Hope nobody's <laughs> looking because you're a jerk because right. of right. COVID. And you're not <laughs> supposed to do that. Not that I would ever do that. Oh. But, you know, I love berries. What can yep. I say?